Good morning. All the beautiful people are here. <laughs> uh, welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living in the heart of Las Cruces on this beautiful Sunday morning. It's always better when we're together. Um, I'm Sarah Benson. This is my husband, Doug, and we're going to get started with a couple of songs. I invite you to stand if you'd like. Yeah, we're going to have fun today. <laughs> I am a light, I am a light, I am a light in this world. I am a light, I am a light, I am a light in this world. And I shine, and I shine, and I shine so bright. And I shine, and I shine, and I shine so bright. You are a light, you are a light, you are a light in this world. You are a light, you are a light, you are a light in this world. And you shine, and you shine, and you shine so bright. And you shine, and you shine, and you shine so bright. We are, we, are we are a light, we are a light, we are a light in this world. We are a light, we are a light, we are a light in this world. And we shine, and we shine, and we shine, and we shine, and we shine so bright. And we shine, and we shine, and we shine, and we shine, and we shine so bright. And we shine, and we shine, and we shine so bright. And we shine, and we shine, and we shine so bright. Our thoughts are prayers, and we are always praying. Our thoughts are prayers. Listen to what you're saying. Seek a higher consciousness, a state of peacefulness, and know that God is always there. And every thought becomes our prayer. Our thoughts are prayers, the tools that we create with. Our thoughts are prayers that spirit resonates with. Seek a higher consciousness, a state of mindfulness, and know that God is always there, and every thought becomes our prayer, and every thought becomes our prayer. All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living here in the heart of Las Cruces, where our vision is a world and loving partnership for the good of all. And I'd like to welcome some of you who are visiting for the first time. I'm glad you're here. Hopefully you got your visitor packet as you came in the door. If you haven't, they are at the doors and you can pick one up on your way out. There is a gift certificate to the bookstore in there, as well as the form you fill out to let us know how you found us. And that way you can also let us know if you want to get our newsletter, which lets you know what's going on here every week. I also want to thank Carrie. She teamed, teamed up for the pride and all the people that helped her. 
We were there and present yesterday. It was the first time since I moved here in 2006 I got to enjoy Pride instead of work it. So I want to thank that team so much. Yeah, I really appreciated it. And we had quite the parade and all kinds of people. So it was a lot of fun. And we'll let you know how we did in terms of sales next week. And we also will need help unloading Carrie's truck. They got everything in there last night, but it's not unloaded. So after service, if any of you are able-bodied and can help her get the stuff from the truck back into the building, we would greatly appreciate that. Our board is also meeting after the service today. We have open uh, board meetings. You're welcome to stick around if you'd like to see what we're all about. And next Sunday will be our, October th our October's third Sunday of the month. First potluck and town hall meeting for the center. So it'll be a potluck, and we'll have our town hall meeting in the middle of that. Um, and this way, we'll start doing these quarterly to uh, let you know what's going on. So the board will let you in on what's happening, the latest, greatest. So hopefully, you'll stick around. We'll have a potluck and um, our town hall meeting. And it also happens to be when Singing Out is going to have their concert at 3. So we will have the town hall meeting and be done by 2. OK? <laughs> I promise you. So we're going to move quick, but it'll be fun. And uh, they will be doing their um, concert here on Saturday night at 7. Or you can stick around and make a whole day of being here and go to their 3 o'clock concert on Sunday. The next treasure sale, we're gearing up for that as well. October 28th, and you can start bringing in your things. We have bins, oh, over there along that wall. <laughs> and we will be uh, collecting them and keeping them behind that divider for a while till the concert's done, and then you'll see as things expand. But you're welcome to start bringing in your things. And we are looking also into November when Deborah Taylor Russell is coordinating a craft and bake sale that's going to take place out here on a Saturday, November 18th. So if you're crafty and want to start making things, consider doing that and, and contributing to our sale. As she said, don't start baking quite yet. <laughs> but we'll be looking to collect uh, baked goods as well as crafts. So if that's your thing, now would be the time to start making some. And now, please welcome our practitioner. Is it going to be Teresa this morning? I'm really Bob right here. <laughs> he's, he's allowing me um, to substitute for him. So I did want one, just one more announcement. A couple of weeks ago, we decided to do Love Wins, right? And there's a big red barrel. Uh, we are filling up the food pantry for the juvenile probation office. Within two days, that red barrel was filled. I went and took all of that to them. Second week, last Wednesday, the barrel was overflowing. And so thank you, the juvenile probation. We're doing it till the end of October, so don't stop. You can bring in um, the food items and personal items. There's a list of things they would like to see delivered. They are so appreciative. So thank you, CSL and, and Unity and the community that are helping um, do that. So. I am Teresa Valenzuela. I am the platform assistant this morning. And what I know is that we believe in the power of prayer, which we call spiritual mind treatment or affirmative prayer. There is a prayer request in the seat behind you for those in the front row or in front of you where you can leave your prayer request so we pray with you. On Tuesday afternoons, the New Thought community comes together over Zoom, uh, ministers and practitioners, and we pray with you. And we'd also love to hear all of those prayers that have been answered in that timely fashion that the divine does. So there are also uh, gratitude cards. We'd love to hear how, um, how things have manifested, right? Once you plant that seed, if you were here for meditation, you plant that seed and nurture it, and it grows in manifestations of things we can not even imagine come into our lives and into the world. You can also use our prayer request button on the website. Everything that you send in is um, kept uh, close and, and private. And um, yeah, and then we do it. We do that prayer. We just heard that song, right? Um, let's see. In addition, oh, 
there we go, I have to read. Um, there, if you'd like a quick prayer treatment after service, some of the practitioners here are wearing their stoles, will be around the room and, and ready to provide this service for you. And just a reminder that as we pray with you, that shift into the reality of the truth is blessing my life. So come, come to us, please. I, I'd love some blessings, I, that, even more so than I've already had. Now it's time for song, silence, and prayer. In the silence, there is peace. In the silence, there is unspoken joy. In the silence, there's release. From a world filled with chaos and noise, and I awake in these precious moments when I hear all that could never be said and right here in this holy silence I find God I find myself In the silence there is peace In the silence there is unspoken joy In the silence there's release From a world filled with chaos and noise And I awake in these precious moments when I hear could never be said and right here in this holy silence I find God I find God I find myself And so I, I find myself here this morning, I just ground myself in that sense, that knowing, that place of gratitude and of faith. And breathing into this moment, I know that there is one divine creative mind, infinite, limitless, and unlimited. And I am that individualized expression of all of that and more. And I embrace the truth of who I am, that compassionate, kind, joyous being at this moment. And each word that I affirm, and I use the word I, I know that it is all of us, for we are all one in that oneness, of spirit, of God, of the creator, of all that flows out. And I sink into this moment of readiness, open heart and open mind to the words of wisdom and the music of Reverend Randy. And just blessing each and every person and all that they do so that this morning and every day in this center is a blessing 
not only to those who walk through the door, but to our community. And in that respect, our state, our country, and our planet. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I release these words knowing it's already done. I am ready to receive. Are you? And I release and say, and so it is. Amen. Reverend Randy's title for today is, uh, for his talk, his share, is The Four Spiritual Laws of Harvest, How to Live Your Best Life. And for the reading today, I would like to share with you the prayer for world peace that Ernest Holmes wrote. For I know that our best life is already here. Highest consciousness. Peace starts from within each one of us. I know that there is but one mind, which is the mind of God, in which all people live and move and have their being. I know there is a divine pattern for humanity, and within this pattern there is infinite harmony and peace, cooperation, unity, and mutual helpfulness. I know that the mind of each person, being one with the mind of God, shall discover the method, the way, and the means best fitted to permit the flow of divine love between individuals and nations. I know there shall be a free interchange of ideas, of cultures, of spiritual concepts, of ethics, of educational systems, and scientific discoveries for all good belongs to all alike. I know that because the divine mind has created us all, we are bound together in one infinite and perfect unity. In bringing about world peace, I know that all people and all nations will remain individual but unified for the common purpose of promoting peace, happiness, harmony, and prosperity. I know that deep within every person, the divine pattern of perfect peace is already implanted. I now declare, I now declare that in each person and in leaders of thought everywhere, this divine pattern moves into action and form to the end that all nations and all people shall live together in peace, harmony, and prosperity forever. So it is now, and so be it. Thank you. Okay, bring costumes. So, we thought that this particular song was great for the end of Pride Week. Um, it is a popular child song, actually, written by Paul Williams, but it became award-winning. You'll know it, and if you can not resist singing it, because you're going to be singing it in your head all day anyway, so you might as well, you might as well just sing it with us. So if you want to sing, if you want to dance, if you want to sway in your seat, uh, whatever the spirit moves you to do, we would love to have you join us. I'm not going to tell you the name because you'll know it in 30 seconds. Remember, this is a child's song. Why are there so many songs about rainbows and what have we done? so far rainbows are visions but only illusions and look what it's done so far what's so amazing that keeps us stargazing and what do you think we 
nothing might seem Someday we'll find it The rainbow connection The lovers, the dreamers, and me Who said that every wish would be heard and answered when wished on the morning star? Somebody thought of it and someone believed it. Look what it's done so far. What's so amazing that keeps us stargazing and what do we think we might see someday we'll find it the rainbow connection the lovers the dreamers and me all of us under a spell we know that it's probably you been half asleep and have you heard voices i've heard them calling my name is it the sweet sound the call of the young sailors the voice might be one and the same i've heard it too many times to ignore it there's something that i'm supposed to be someday we'll find it the rainbow connection the lovers the dreamers and me la da 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 dee -da do la la da 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 dee da do <laughs> That's too cute. You guys need to keep your costume on and walk and face the video so they can see you straight on. Can you get them? <laughs> come over here. Come over here. No, come here. Come here. Come here. Come over here. <laughs> over here. You got it. Yeah, come over here. That, that's pretty Wave. <laughs> there they are. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That was great. <laughs> I needed them to see. It's always... <laughs> Randy's like, okay, so the... Uh... <laughs> it's so much fun. I love this community because we just enjoy each other and we get to have fun. And it's part of that paradox that spirit can be fun, right? It doesn't have to be all serious every Sunday. Yay, so thank you for bringing the fun, you guys. That was beautiful. And we're gonna have more fun with Reverend Randy Granger, who is an ordained minister with the Universal Life Seminaries, a motivational speaker, educator, workshop leader, professional musician, and licensed massage therapist. He's of Native American ancestry, and he lives right here in Las Cruces, New Mexico. He also practices the science of mind teaching, Zen meditation, and sound healing. And I'm sure there's a lot more. He's also a good cook. So please welcome <laughs> Randy Granger to the platform. Say my sermon in Yoda's voice, I am. <laughs> that was great. To all of my listeners who I invited to tune in this morning, this is our church. This is, <laughs> this is our community. <laughs> Aren't they lovely? Good morning. So this month we're talking about uh, living in l what? Can, can, is anybody having trouble hearing me? Yeah, me too. I can hear myself.
How's that? Is that more better? Okay. I'll just yell. Anyway, we're talking about paradox this month, uh, uh, li living with paradox. And I was halfway through my sermon about living in paradox, and I changed my mind and said, this isn't working, the paradox. And so the thing, it wasn't resonating. So the thing about what we do is spirit moves through us, speaks through us, and lives through us. And so I want to start off by telling you about the legend of the three sisters. This is a Native American story that uh, several tribes that do talk about this story. Once upon a time, very long ago, there were three sisters who lived together in this field. They were all quite different from one another in their size, but also in their way of dressing. One of the three sisters was a little sister, so young that she could only crawl at first, and she was always dressed in green. The second of the three wore a frock of bright yellow, and she had a way of running off by herself whenever the sun shone and the soft wind blew in her face. The third was the eldest sister, standing always very straight and tall above the other sisters, trying to guard them. She wore a pale green shawl, and she had long yellow hair that tossed about her head in the breezes. The only way that the sisters were alike is that they all loved each other very dearly, and they were never separated, and they were sure that they would not be able to live apart from each other. And after a while, a stranger came into their field of the three sisters, a little Indian boy, he was as straight as an arrow, fearless as the eagle that circled above the sky. He knew the way of talking to the birds and the small brothers of the earth, the shrew and the chipmunks, the birds and the young foxes. And the, the three sisters, the one who was just able to crawl, the one, uh, one in the yellow frock and the one with the flowing hair were very much interested in this little Indian boy. They watched him fit his arrow and his bow saw him carve a, a bowl with a stone knife and wondered, where does he go at night? And late in the summer of the first coming of the Indian boy to their field, one of the three sisters disappeared. Now this was the youngest sister in green. She could only creep, and she was scarcely able to stand alone in the field unless she had a stick to which she clung. Her sisters mourned for her until the fall, but she never returned. Once more, the Indian boy came to the field of the three sisters. He came to gather reeds at the edge of the stream nearby to make arrow shafts. The two sisters who were left, they watched him, and they gazed with wonder at the prints of his moccasins in the earth that marked his trail. And that night, the second sister left, the one who was dressed in yellow and who always wanted to run away. She left no mark of where she was going, but it may have been that she followed the tracks of his moccasins. Now there was what, but one sister left, tall and straight. She stood in the field, not once bowing her head with sorrow. But in seeing that she could not live there alone anymore, the days grew shorter and the nights grew colder. And her green shawl faded and grew thin. And her hair, once long and golden, was tangled by the wind. Day and night she sighed for her sisters to return to her. But they did not hear her, her voice when she cried. It was low and plaintive like the wind. But one day, when it was the season of the harvest, the little Indian boy heard her crying for the other sisters, and she began to mourn there in the field, and he felt very sorry for her. So he took her up in his arms and carried her to the lodge of his father and his mother. Oh, what a surprise! What a surprise awaited there for her. Her two lost sisters were there in the lodge of the little Indian boy, safe and so happy to see her. They had been curious about the Indian boy, so they followed him home <laughs> to see where he lived. And they had liked his warm cave so much that they, that they decided now that winter was coming, they might as well stay with him. And so they were doing all they could to be useful. The little sister in green, not quite grown up, was helping to keep the dinner pot full. The sister in yellow sat on the shelf drying herself as she planned to fill the dinner pot later. And the third sister joined him, ready to grind meal for the little native boy. And the three sisters were again never separated. And to this day, when we plant, we plant the three sisters together always. The squash growing along the ground prevents the weeds. The beans fix the soil. And the corn provides a stock for the other sisters to grow up on. And that's the th story of the three sisters. And since it's harvest time, I decided to... Work that into our spiritual lessons about harvest. 
I'm a Virgo. I was born in September. Autumn has always been my favorite time of the year, especially in New Mexico, with our changing light and our foliage, our green chili roasting. That's a New Mexico aromatherapy, I call it. We harvest what we have sown at this time of the year, what we've weeded and cared for and watered. Abundance is in our freezers and in our pots. Ernest Holmes, the founder of uh, Science of Mind, he uses this metaphor of planting ideas like seeds into the fertile soil of the creative mind, the creative medium, he calls it. Seeds are put into the ground, the claim is made, and they grow things in thy time, not in my time. And each type of seed has their own germination time. For instance, sunflowers germinate in a week or so. The other plants uh, may take many weeks to germinate. Tomatoes and chilies, they need uh, warm, sunny days and cool nights. Ernest Holmes wrote in uh, this thing called you, he wrote, guard well the garden of your mind. It is God's garden of your soul. It is your garden of Eden wherein may grow your fondest desires and hopes blossoming into fulfillment. Sometimes I like to buy plants in the nursery and when I remove them from the container, they're all root bound. Any of you had that experience, just completely root bound. And this causes the, the plant to have a stunted growth and it's time to put them into a larger container or stick them in the ground. I have an old stock tank that I've been using, I have a koi pond, I, uh, a stock tank I turned into a koi pond. And after 10 years, it, it finally started to develop leaks, so I turned it into a tomato bed and basil bed. And it's growing crazy, just climbing the, the walls and just, it's wonderful. I love, really love having those tomatoes. But when I buy those little, little pots that are so root bound, you know, they also make me think of that human life can also do that too, that roots, our roots need to become, to need to spread out to become stronger and healthier. And it makes me think in what ways have our thoughts and complaints made us root bound? What stagnant beliefs has, have we maybe outgrown? What new containers are gonna hold our dreams? So in reflecting, on this time of the year with the harvest, I was reminded of the four spiritual laws of harvest. And I really believe that they apply to our day-to-day -day lives. Some of them attribute them to, some people attribute them to um, Buddhism, but I don't necessarily, I, I think that they're just really common and they also fit into our new thought way of thinking too. So the four laws of harvest, the first one is that we reap what we sow, okay? When a farmer plants wheat seeds, well, guess what? Wheat grain will always result, not rye, not barley, not corn, but wheat. The crop harvested is exactly based on the seeds that have been planted. Likewise, for every intention that we act on or that we set in, into our intention, we will experience that. So like if I have good motives, I'm going to harvest those good results. We certainly hope so. And if you have good feelings and good memories, regardless of what the outcome might, might be, uh, we really can't control how others think of those. Anyway, on the other hand, if the motives are, are bad, then, then in my mind, we, we, can ex we can never experience positive or good feelings because maybe our intentions have, have not been that, that way too. So th that's what I mean by first we reap what we sow. Exactly what we put into creative mind is what we will be harvesting. Have you ever had this experience when something bad happens to you and you, and you think, uh, why is this happening to me? Maybe next time we can ask ourselves, you know, what, what am I harvesting? What am I sowing now that I, uh, that I what am I reaping now that I've, all, I've already sown? This, uh, this year in particular for, for me has been a, a, a year of a lot of blessings, a lot of really good, wonderful things. And it's not that they're, un they're unexpected, but I also know that I've been working on them. We have to practice every single day. We, we practice our words and our thoughts and we know that those are, that those are seeds. Be before I condemn myself in any way, I always try to stop myself and I shift that into something good. Second, we reap far more than we sow. Likewise, our motives and actions can have far bigger outcomes than we can ever imagine. For instance, a kindly word spoken or written at the right time can leave someone encouraged for days. Have you ever noticed that? 
our words might be life-changing for someone. We too will continue to feel good long afterwards we have done that. Like tiny acorns, our motives and actions can produce far-reaching results like huge oak trees. I suppose that a uh, harshly spoken word uh, can, can, can also be remembered for decades too, so be mindful about that. It's important to consider the motives behind our thoughts and words and actions. Over in Great Britain, there is a giant sycamore tree. Have any of you heard about this? Um, uh, it's been there for several hundred years and uh, an act of vandalism, somebody cut it down uh, last, last week. It was a couple of hundred years old. It was very iconic, beautiful sycamore tree. Well, today, this morning, I, I read that a woman hiked several miles with a uh, sapling sycamore tree on, on her back and she planted it. So she has planted that back in there. So isn't that beautiful? And I really um, hope that it stays there for many, many generations. The third spiritual law of harvest is we don't reap if we don't sow. You know, you have to set your intention if, if you want to experience something good in life, I suppose. We must lay the groundwork and fertilize the soil, fertilize the medium of our, of our mind, like Ernest Holmes talks about. Like when, likewise, in our minds, we will not experience a result for which we have not created the cause, the, the cause being what um, science of mind also talks about, too. If my motives are pure and clean, then why would I suffer from regret, heartache, or depression? Rather, I will experience peace and contentment and happiness. When we begin to practice mindfulness, it begins to make a noticeable difference. We no longer react and respond to life mindlessly and suffer quite as much. How reassuring to know that in any given situation that we will not meet with sadness or unhappiness if we have not created that scenario in our mind. But we have acted out of honest and good motives Recently, I was um, flying back from Alaska, like Reverend Bunny mentioned, and we just happened to be going different directions in the Seattle Airport. Was it the Seattle Airport? Okay. <laughs> and um, it, it was, it was uh, we had been misdirected to the gates kept changing where a plane was going to leave from. So like for an hour and a half, I was sitting at one gate, very happy, having some iced tea and everything, and then looked on my phone, oh, no, the gate has changed. So you go look at the board. No, 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 we really meant that gate, <laughs> which is way on the other side of the universe. And so I set my intention. I set my intention, everything in divine time, everything in divine time, everything is always working out for me. I release this and I just go with the flow. And I ran into Reverend Bonnie. <laughs> <laughs> and we flowed together <laughs> and it was great. We, we ended up having just a really nice time and a really nice, nice flight back. And it's those little things that you're always setting your intentions. So when, we, when we're talking about harvesting what we sow, it's not just um, the big giant things. It's the daily, daily things. Like when you're going to the store and you're thinking, you know, it's going to be a great day. Everybody's going to be friendly and, and nice. By just setting that little intention, sowing those little, casting out those little wire, wild flower seeds of goodness. It's real and it does happen. And the more that we recognize it, then we will definitely reap what we are sowing. Finally, we reap even though there may be a delay. Our, our ocotillo plants here in the Southwest, have you seen it in our uh, Chihuahuan Desert, those beautiful ocotillos? When people first move here, they go, why do you have all those dead sticks out there You know, in the desert? They look like dead sticks, and they look like dead sticks most of the time. But you know that when you water the ocotillo, you don't water its roots, you water the tree. You water those dead sticks. That's how it absorbs its water, the really shallow root system. That's why in May or whenever it rains, I don't know if you've been out to the Chihuahuan Desert lately, but they're all, the leaves are all thick and green and beautiful. As soon as it rains, within days, those leaves just come out and they're these beautiful, dark, dark green, little tiny leaves. And within a week, we have these orange blossoms like torches all over the Chihuahuan Desert. It knows, and it believes, and it has faith, <laughs> and it does believe we reap even though there may be a delay. 
Likewise, the, infect, the, uh, the effects of our intentions and our actions, they're never lost. Just, you know, um, I've heard a lot of Ernest Holmes talks, and a lot of them are available now on YouTube, which is really nice. Some of his talks way back when he was doing the talks over in Pasadena, and he was always talking about um, when we do a treatment that we simply do this treatment for, by doing a treatment, what we're doing is we're, we're revealing the truth of the situation, whether it be love, whether it be beauty, whether it be truth, whether it be goodness, and you let it go. But you never in your mind let it, let it turn into anything, oh, doubt coming in. I don't know if it, I wonder if it's really going to happen. You simply let it go and you just keep saying, and so it is, you know, and, and you keep letting it go and you keep holding that in your mind at consciousness. A long time ago, that when the uh, when the artists from the East Coast, when they first started to come to the Taos Pueblo, they would go to the Taos Pueblo and they would be doing rain dances out there and they would say, you guys are crazy, you know, you can't make it rain. And um, sure enough, it would start raining. And they asked them, how did you do it? Do you have a special prayer? Do you do, you, do, you know, say little things? And, and they would say, well, we dance until it starts raining, you know? <laughs> Oh, okay. And so there's that constant, that uh, resilience. I really like that. So what if, what if you know that your intent is not good and you change your mind and don't carry it out? Excellent. You've changed that. You would always have good feelings and memories about, about a situation. So what I recommend to do, what I always do, is do a gut check. Before I speak, before I hit send, before I comment, before I text, I ask myself these things. Is what I'm saying, is it true? Is it kind? Is it necessary? Is it helpful? Is it true? Is it kind? Is it necessary? Is it helpful? If the answer is no, Maybe what you're about to say should be left unsaid. Plant only what you wish to, wish to harvest. Let me try that again. Plant only what you wish to harvest spiritually. Ernest Holmes wrote, It may be necessary to cultivate your garden, to uproot the weeds and to straighten out the rows, planting new seeds, new ideas, broader visions, and deeper realizations of life. New aspirations must be bedded here, fertilized with the fervor of hope, the conviction of faith, the beauty of wholeness, and the quietness of peace, mirroring that beautiful song that Sarah did earlier. Watch your garden carefully, he says, guarded patiently, waiting for a new harvest, for you shall reap what you have sown. So, with that in mind, do you all have your cards? Did you get cards? Okay, great. These cards are going to be our harvest. Got it? This practice is called the practice of spiritual circulation. The practice of spiritual circulation. Great. So the first thing to do is write your name, Pat. <laughs> no, not don't write Pat, unless you're Pat. Write your name on the front of that envelope. Write, write your full name, okay? What we're going to do with this card, we are going to sow some spiritual seeds of what we want to be experiencing this time next year or you can do it in six months if, if you want if, if you're if you think you're really good at at doing that that's excellent do it the accelerated so we are going to write and, and we're going to put it somewhere prominent maybe on our dresser and on our mirror with our name on it to remind us maybe in six months even to open it and see what we are experiencing okay so here are the words i would really like you to write in there. This is the practice of spiritual circulation. The first word is gratitude. 
and just write gratitude and with like a colon and then just leave, leave some space because we're going to write a little more in there. So write the word gratitude and then the word receiving underneath that. And then the word giving. And finally, the word forgiving. Forgiving. So with these, after the word gratitude, we might write something that we anticipate being grateful for within this time, maybe a loving relationship, maybe a, a new connection, maybe a, an inheritance, maybe a friend or a long lost relative calling on us. And under re, re, receiving, if you want to put an amount in there, you can do that too. Or say that you'll receive, maybe you want to receive good news about something. Maybe you want to, to receive um, perfect, perfect and divine health. Under giving, you can, of course, I know be appreciated if you wrote, if you wrote CSL Las Cruces. <laughs> tithing, tithing works, people, so, you know. And under that last one, you can write, is there someone, is there something, is there anything that comes to mind like a little splinter that you haven't forgiven yet? Maybe you haven't let go, and it's just you. There's nobody else is, is going to read these. These are yours. So take a little time and just write something in there. Whatever comes to heart, whatever comes to your heart, we're sowing the seeds that we want to harvest, sowing the spiritual seeds we want to harvest. I'll write them too. Okay. Before um, Reverend Bonnie comes up here, I'm just going to end with a uh, with an ancient Hawaiian healing chant that I just found that really resonates. It says the garden is rich with diversity, with plants of a hundred families in the space between the trees, with all the colors and fragrance fragrances of basil, mint, and lavender. God, keep my remembrance remembrance pure. God, fill my heart with love, dill, anise, tansy. Holy winds blow in me, rhododendron, zinnia. May my prayer be beautiful. May my rem remembrance, O God, be as incense to thee in the sacred grove of eternity. As I smell and remember the ancient forests of earth. And so it is. Thank you. So put your address on the outside of those envelopes, and you can drop them in the plate, seal them, and we'll send them back to you in a year. See what you've harvested. Got that? <laughs> Sound good? All right, practitioners, let's surround the room, and let's have a little prayer to solidify these seeds that we've just put out into our intention. And so as we go within, we just know that those seeds that we plant, as we write, we're planting seeds. As we think, we are planting seeds. As we speak, we are planting seeds. As we move into our heart space, we become aware of even more seeds, things that we want to generate in this world between this year and next, possibly even beyond. And so we know that right now in the mind of God, these thoughts, these ideas have already been planted for gratitude, for receiving, for giving, and for forgiving. We're already releasing those that need to be released. We are already welcoming into our heart space all that we are ready to receive. And so we know that it is already so in the mind of God. And how exciting it will be next harvest season to open these and see how they have manifest in our lives. We know and trust and believe that these seeds, as they've been planted, will 
create exactly as they've been expressed. They will show up as how we have planted them. And so we just release them in our mind now. We release them from our hearts and we allow them to go into that law that works on each seed, knowing that we are planting in good intention and in gratitude, ready to receive in a year or sooner. And so it is. There are pink feathers everywhere here. Thank you. I just felt that just bury those seeds even deeper into our awareness and consciousness. Let's tell Reverend Randy, thank you one more time. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. And please know that some of that music has been chosen by Ken Burns' film, The American Buffalo. So Randy will be the music for that film. Yay! It will be on KRWG-TV October 16th and 17th at 7 p.m. if you'd like to see it. And he also has music himself, uh, CDs that you can get if you'd like to. And on the 31st of this month, oh, 29th, Sunday the 29th, he will be the music out at the full moon at White Sands. So you can get a whole lot more of that if you want to go see him out at White Sands. So we want to thank him again for all of that. And that's part of our gratitude for today, and it's also time to think about how we give back to the center that allows you to hear amazing things like that and playful things like our <laughs> two women that did their fun little song in the beginning. <laughs> Yay. This month, 10% of everything that comes through the center is going to the Spay and Neuter Action Program. There's some information about it up there. Their mission is to prevent the suffering and death of dogs and cats due to overpopulation in Doniana County. They said that thousands of animals are put down each year in shelters, and they can reduce that number of animals being destroyed by spaying or neutering our loving companion animals. So together we can make a difference in the welfare of animals. So the spay and neuter program gives vouchers to people who can't afford to get their animals spayed or neutered and helps that to take place in this county. 
So this month we're giving 10% to the span neuter program and we're so grateful for that. And again, we're grateful to all that you give to us to keep these doors open, the lights on, the sound working, the video, the videographer, everything. It's so wonderful. Thank you for all that you do to support what's happening here at the center. So let's say together our blessing. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, in me. And we can sing, I am so blessed. And just think about what you just put in your letters to yourself. And you're saying, I am so blessed already. This is already so in the mind of God. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. I love that we get harmony on that now. It sounds beautiful. Thank you. You all sound fabulous. So let's now stand and sing our closing song. What are we doing today, Sarah? Um, I release. I release. I'm going to get right. this. I'm going to get this. Song. We're going to get this down so you all can <laughs> clap when we get through the solo. Now give her a chance to get through that solo, and then we're going to release. So again, think about those seeds. We're releasing them into the law. <laughs> and it's here somewhere. There was a time in my life Thought I'd have to do it all for myself I didn't know the grace of God was sufficient Didn't know the love of God was at hand But now I can say If you are discouraged Struggling just to make it through another day you've got to let it go let it all go and this is what you have to say i release and i let go let the spirit run my life and my heart is open wide yes i'm only here for god no more struggle my faith I'll see the light I am free in the spirit yes I'm only here for God oh I release and I let go let the spirit run my life and my heart is open wide yes I'm only here for God no more struggle no more strife with my faith I'll see the light I am free in the spirit Yes, I'm only here for God Oh, I am free in the spirit Yes, I'm only here for God Thank you so much. Have a wonderful week. And anyone who can help carry and load her truck, please help. Thank you. <laughs>